unpinned the hat, quickly took this green dress off, threw on some clothes for the plane. Yeah, I was saying goodbye. We get on the plane, and it's not the pilot, but whoever is sort of overseeing the crew. And he came, and he knelt next to my seat, and he took his hat off. And I just remember looking at him, he goes, we appreciate everything you did for our country. Oh, wait, will this end? Uh. Is there no end? <laughs> How many lies can you be caught in before we say, produce the receipts or it didn't happen? Because that's where I am with these two. But remember when she gave that bizarre story, it would have been after this, wouldn't it, where <laughs> she said some of the South African cast of the Lion, the Lion King <laughs> likened her experience or her marriage to Nelson Mandela being <laughs> It was some absolute fantasy. And the actual person who would have said that, who was the South African in the cast, came out and said, I'd never said it. Wasn't even there. Yeah. Wasn't even there at the premiere. Hakuna Matata means bullshit. <laughs> Tonight, for the first time, they tell their story. The Oprah interview. It was less about setting the record straight and at least filling in the blanks that other people were filling in for us. This was where, again, they got the softest interview ever recorded in the world and they were caught in so many verifiable lies. Not recollections may vary, but verifiable lies. This is what they don't get. You only cry wolf so many times. Beyonce just texted. <gasps> really meant. Shut up. Oh, Beyonce! Beyonce is texting! Oh, she's watched Oprah and she sent a text. So look, I'm going to read it all out because I'm sure Beyonce is really appreciative of her private text also being shared. And how lucky that the text message came while she was sitting down and the camera was oh, there. Right she wasn't there. on the toilet. No. So the camera was right there. Well, this is Prince Philip's funeral. Isn't it? Yeah. Tell me about going back. What was that like? Um, it was hard. Neither, none of us really wanted to have to talk about it at my grandfather's funeral, but we did. Um, and, you know, I've, I've had to make peace with the fact that you're probably never going to get genuine accountability or a genuine apology. Apology for what? Oh. But again, the funeral happened the during a lockdown, the Queen's had to sit by herself, mm -hmm. you have an opportunity to be with your family and you talk about you. You know, these two are a couple of very, very um, committed gaslighters because they have their narrative and they will just make anything fit into it. But so how do we deal with that? Like, how on earth, like... He works for his mother, like, I, I that, know. I know. Like, it's your brother. I'm not going to say anything about your brother, but it's so obvious. No, 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 whoa, she didn't. Whoa. Your brother? Not bad enough that she's alienated. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to blame her completely, but let's not pretend she hasn't helped in alienating him from his former family. But now it's your brother and he's somehow behind their court case, not going, uh, you know, in precisely the direction they wanted. That is the most honest bit of the whole six hours. The way they fight, that's how they fight. She blows up and he, like a puppy, goes... <laughs> that's their whole thing Dynamic. done. They finally, accidentally, thinking that it's the great moment of victimhood, they have ended up shooting themselves in the foot. Shooting themselves? The smoking gun is aimed at their feet. <laughs> uh, they're back in Sandringham, five different options. Well, then, OK. We're done. Walk away. Yeah. This is trying to keep it going and set up the idea that every negative story is leaked by him, knowing, like, he's able to do this because he knows his brother can't fight back. Well, they can't. The royals can't. They can't go for a tit-for-tat reality series. That's not how it's done. Um, and it's... Uh, I just think this is... Uh, so low to be going after your brother like this, your blood. He's got no proof of anything. Well, ironically, for a show that is so much about his mother, 
how would any mother feel knowing oh. that a brother was willing to do that to another brother? You know what? I think his mother would be appalled. And I think, you know, a lot of people have uh, thought, you know, what would Diana think of Meghan and Meghan and Harry? I reckon Diana would have seen Meghan coming from a mile away. Yep, saying, pal, she... fun, sh out. <laughs> I don't think the marriage to Meghan would have happened if Princess Di was still with us. Let's call this a modern fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a girl from LA. Some people called her an actress. When will this be? <laughs> and there was a guy from London. Some people called him a prince. Do they really, I mean, uh, can we just go through the whole wedding again? It's not like we didn't experience it the first time. My love has no beginning, my love has no end. No front or back and my love won't bend. Oh, okay, enough, enough, gone, gone. Okay. No, enough. So, she's Diana. I've lost the will just to, to carry on. He's Diana. Anything nasty about us has been leaked by my brother. The bully, the bully, <laughs> who the palace lies to protect whilst they feed me to the wolves. At the end of the day, this is a man who's, what, about 40? He's not a child. He's not a naive 20-year-old. He's made the decisions to throw his family under the bus, to personally attack his brother, who's now a bully and a liar and God knows what else.